We talk in media, it's your buddy Mikey, giving you the community, the news that you need to hear. You may not care, but you need to hear that's important to your lifestyle and your well-being. Things that change the dynamic in Israel, Iran comes back into play. Another sad day in this war that, no offense, none of us Americans really, really know about. It goes so deep, so far back. Um, you just It's going to be he say, she say, all day long if you try to figure this out. But right now, from the from the naked eye looking in, Israel says they want to attack again against Iran. After Iran threw out, no offense, some of the weakest weapons they had at Israel, telegraphed, notified the U.S., notified Israel it was coming, and every almost all of them were shot down. Okay, Israel, how did it start? At least in this instance. At least in this instance, I know they're gonna go. A lot of a lot of Jews are gonna go. Hey, well, there's more to that. There's a past. There's a Iran's has burned our flag, our U.S. flag. I get it. I get it. But for this particular instance, the Israelis bombed an embassy in Syria that contained one of the top generals' children. They all died. I think three sons died in that event. That's when Iran said they had to strike back. It was an embassy. All right. So Israel has clearly decided. So, so the embassy attack negated an attack by Iran with about 300 missiles that were shot down. And then Israel has now said they can't shoot at us for anything. We are going to strike back. Why am I doing this video? Okay, let me show you something. The more and more I look... <laughs> The more and more I look, this dynamic, I feel, is greater than we think. I think it's bigger than the Jews and the Iranians. I think this is a conflict of nations and money. And when you follow the money, there's a lot of things at play. You could call black gold something, which is oil. And then you have the dollar. The dollar is the currency of the world at this time but due to spending by the u.s excessive spending that all of us are a part of that's how we enjoy the lifestyle we've had in the past now it's crazily inflated because it's breaking down it was overkill and that overkill now is causing many of the currencies around the world that are pinned to the dollar to go down oil Obviously, it's a big thing for everybody that makes the world run. If you look into it, kids, just go ahead and search oil and see how many things it's in. And you say, oh, wow, we can't survive without it. And that is correct. It's more than just cars, folks. It does a lot of stuff in your house. It's everywhere. Ships. It's the most important. That's what they call it, black gold. The most important vehicle that we have in the world today for survival until somebody figures out another way, right? Even the plants that make the uh, electric vehicle batteries need the oil to, to move it. Now, when we look at um, some of the talk here of the war, we start to delineate size. We mentioned the dollar, which kind of is tied to the pound. And you know NATO, pound is English, that's Britain. Yes, that's everything in West Europe, essentially. Paris, I mean, France, Britain. We have the beautiful English with the USA, and then you got Israel. Now, we know who's currently at war in the whole NATO. We know who is, well, not the whole NATO, that's another conversation, but we know who's currently at war in Eastern Europe when we have Ukraine versus Russia. The argument from Putin's side is these guys are getting too close to me. With NATO, they're going to be right at my border. How much more are they going to go in there? All right. Why not mention Putin? Well, Putin is in a group called the BRICS. All right. And the BRICS, the BRICS is trying to create their own currency. It's going to take a long time. Uh, okay. But they are trying to start that process. Now, remember, these are these are intellectuals. Uh, these are parties that plan. So what does that mean? That means 
guys, we are late notice. What does that mean? We take a long time to react. The, the government doesn't take... If they see something coming 20 years from now that's going to impact them, they're going to try to cut it out now. All right? Because it's not easy to go away with the dollar. Everything we use is in dollars, right? It'll take a long time. But the end of the D-Mark emerged as the main vehicle currency after the dollar served in the interim. Well, uh, you know, while the renminbi will be the main currency for trade, payments and settlements within BRICS, the role of a new prime holding currency offers fresh possibilities. All right. This is a big, big deal. If the dollar loses power... This is my opinion on what's happening. If the dollar loses power, the lifestyle that we enjoy today, folks, may be gone. We may be looking at a Venezuela, Argentina. Okay. The reason why we live the way we do is because the dollar is strong. So if you wonder why, in my opinion, why the U.S. Is in, has so many bases everywhere, they are here. They are there, really. Yeah, to, there's some internal conflict. There's some selfishness like a Netanyahu trying to remain in, in president, remain in power, which, which is what it appears, doing anything to do that. And war kind of does that. Hey, we're at war. Netanyahu brought us into this. He can, he's going to have to bring us out. We got to reelect him. That kind of deal. Biden may be doing the same thing. You never know. But the fact of the matter is that in order to keep the dollar powerful, you have to kind of bully it. And being bully is what we've done throughout the world with our bases to try to maintain the American lifestyle. That's why a lot of people want to come over here. Okay. Now has the gap closed between American lifestyles and the lifestyles of others? Definitely. You can go to South America and see that. Um, even Africa's coming up now and a lot of these other countries, right? Are the countries that, no offense, America has laughed at or provided aid for. Because remember, China came into power due to the U.S. wanting cheaper manufacturing. See, greed, greed wreaks failure at the end of the day. The greedy executives in the U.S. didn't want to pay. You remember this time, older folks. They didn't want to pay the auto workers here. They were too expensive. The unions and all that shit. They weren't making margins. And they decide, let's outsource the work. That's how the Indians and Asians came about. That's what, do you realize that you, your spending brought these folks into full power mode? Ain't that crazy? But that's just how life goes. As everybody tried to be their own business, including myself, and you're hiring all these, you know, you guys been on, you guys been on fever and all that shit, right? All these, all these little sites where you can hire somebody from overseas to be a VA if you have a business. As you all outsource, oh, I got, I got people from this country doing the work for me. It's very similar to what I told to, to, to my culture here. You know, instead of, it's, everyone wanted to go to college instead of learning the skilled trades. And they thought that was the better path. They're like, well, I, I'm, a, I'm a partner here and uh, I'm a lawyer here. I'm a doctor here. Mm -hmm. Yes, good money. But in the scale of things, if you would have started a plumbing company, expanded that, you could have had a monopoly and charged the same amount as some of these lawyers and be made, be made low key. An HVAC specialist. See, blacks, I'll say it, blacks, we could have been in those helper industries. And just like China, driven a monopoly to where we had the power in driving any of the detail around those, on, around those uh, vehicles. Now, I know I, I've learned that there's a lot of things stopping folks in the U.S. from really entering into those fields. But the other groups looks like they have started to slowly seep in and take it over, specifically the Hispanics. OK, the Hispanics. Now, I'm not sure of their licensees, but they're definitely there at least doing the work, whether illegal or legal. And they're going to come up. Mexico's coming up. China is now a. A, a gold mine of manufacturing. They've come back 10 times stronger. Not only did they continue to service us from manufacturing, they started to take over the design portion and started to think on their own and drive their own um, 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 economic system, which was dangerous for us because now they don't rely on us buying no more. They can kind of buy on their own and make their own pyramid. Russia, a country that we sanctioned for years and years, has slowly come up through the oil trade and through the war that happened with Ukraine, as everyone thought that the U, the, 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 the NATO, I'm going to call it NATO, including Ukraine, even though Ukraine is not part of NATO, 
the NATO boys were trying to impress their power, saying these guys are getting too powerful. These guys are building roles, inroads into our currency. This is what I think this is about. Okay. Iran and Israel have beef. They've had beef for a long time, but I I don't think this beef uh, 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 is is I don't think the beef that's happening right now is is a is a prerequisite for why the U.S. and NATO, Ukraine want to jump in this war. I think this is a war of currencies, and they're taking advantage of the fact that those two hate each other to say. Eventually, we want to jump in, even though the outward media has stated that both Europe and the U.S. have stated no go. Is it a true no go is the question for me, right? Is it a true no go? And that's why I gave the BRICS background, because I'm not sure how Israel can go about doing what it wants in this way, right? Because... The world, the world is at risk. All right, the world is at risk. Now, be advised, certain countries love war, and you know who that is. Remember, you can see that face, right? Remember that uh, the U.S. came from the U.K., so they're like ones. Both speak English. We are allegedly the trailer trash of England, but we're still with England at the end of the day. Okay. All right. They are trying to uh, mitigate what's happening in, ha in, in, in Israel, Iran. In my opinion, I don't think anybody's truly ready for a war of, of that scale. Now, the currencies are failing. The inflation is high. They need something to bring the shit down. A war would do that. The war would certainly do that. It would be a, a cataclysmic event a la the COVID. Okay? It'd be cataclysmic for us, for other nations. All right? Only safety would be Africa, South America, you know, countries that really never get into the wars because, no offense, they're too busy killing each other with crime and shit anyway. <laughs> so now, U.S. said no. U.K. said no. France said slow down. Netanyahu says... I don't care. I'm going to go in. We're going to we're going to retaliate. Israel has the right to retaliate. Every country has the right to retaliate. I'll be honest with you. It's their country. They can do what they want. But UK, US and others do have a power. One that would truly negate the need. OK. To negate the need to go into the war. That is stepping back. Only providing aid for both sides if a war were to transpire. And if they don't step back and they decide to step in, NATO and the U.S., etc. Russia and China will definitely be in play. China now leads the world in manufacturing everything. They lead the world in manufacturing everything. Something that the U.S. led in the 1940s and 50s. So when you're leading in manufacturing, that includes missiles, ships, planes, etc. It's almost a deadly, 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 deadly bon, bon voyage to attack a partner of China or Russia. Because China can continue to provide the munitions, the supply. Russia can continue the tactical fight. They have the technology. They're no slouch, right? America comes out with an F-35 stealth fighter. Russia's always right behind with its equivalent, with their spies that are already here through the border. Yes, I'll say it. And China spies are here, too. So they're already in here. All right? And we're playing, you're playing a cat and mouse game that is going to get us in a lot of trouble. And it's going to cause a uh, truly an upending death toll that no one has ever thought or seen. And the American lifestyle that we enjoy, the TikTok dancers and the Instagram talkers and the YouTube talkers such as myself are going to have to repivot our lives and get ready for a new lifestyle that the Middle East is known for forever. And that is the potential ending, end game of this 
action by Israel. I want to slow it down. I think the th key thing to look for right now, in my opinion, is the backup of the U.S., the U.K., and France, the NATO backup. If they decide to help Israel in any way or find a way to uh, manipulate the world into thinking they're helping Israel and they have to step in because that's going to probably happen. Well, now we got to step in. For, by the way, let me let me just segue real quick. Is uh, Jews in the cabinet? Jews. People always ask, how are Jews so powerful? They're very smart people. They're intelligent and they're tactical. OK. Jews in uh, U.S. government. What you're going to see here, I had a list. I think I sent to my email. I mean, just just think about how small Israel is. But they have 26 members in the House of Representatives serving in the state of Congress. I'm trying to see. Even for the Secretary of State, these are all, Jesus. Yeah, Secretary of State, there we go. So this is the latest. This is the incumbents. These are very, very powerful people. Powerful. And they hold full of the positions in the United States government. You got to respect game the way it is, man. This is this is what they do. Very intelligent. These are all Jews, guys. They're under Joe Biden. Secretary of State, Secretary of the Treasury, Secretary of Homeland Security, Attorney General. Do you see how you lobby and make yourself powerful? This is it. Okay? Will they have some bias for their own country? They should. <laughs> well, we'll tell them no. Grandma's from there, their family's from there, of course. Of course, not not you know. This is not a hateful thing. This is a understanding thing. Hey, you want power? This is the way to do it. You want to have a stronghold? You want your 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 homeland to be protected? You you move up to the United States government and you take the some of the highest positions, <laughs> and then you can make decisions for the U.S. Can you believe Homeland Security, Treasury, Secretary of State, Attorney General? Congratulations! Wow. Wow, crazy, right? Crazy, crazy. And throughout history, they've been there, man. They, they never, they never let loose. Look at this. Why have? Look at this. This is Jew. Again, small country. White House Chief of Staff, Jeff Zanes. All right, Chair of the Council of Economic Advisors, Jared Bernstein. Okay, look at this girl here. Director of National Intelligence of Real Haynes. She huh? That's why this could turn bad for the US. As in you may not want it. Look at the rest. Can we continue? Look at this. Is this the Congress? Let's keep going. The governors. The governors, Colorado, Illinois, Hawaii, Pennsylvania. Well, that's not gonna help. I mean, no offense, brothers, but big position, but not not too crazy, right? Incumbents here, lieutenant governors. Let's see the incumbents. Let's see if there's anything. There's always somebody there. Vermont, okay. They touch everything. State attorney generals. That should be. They're big a lawyer. The lawyer thing. They're huge in, especially in the big states. Josh Stein, Michigan. They're nestled. They're nestled in. Every single, every single political position that they can be, guys. All right. Everything. They've always been there. All right. Municipal government. See how they, they touch everything? They touch everything, guys. They touch, look, they're in Texas with Abbott. Okay. They're in Texas with Abbott. Very, very powerful group. They use their intelligence, work hard, and they got into the positions. And, of course, you're going to help your own. You see, this is not a hateful video. This is an understanding of what has to be done for you to be able to lobby and have this type of support for what you believe in. 
Okay? So what do you think is going to happen? All right? When things go down, you know, let's let's let me let me let me just I didn't search this, but Jews in UK government. All right? Very, very powerful group in the way they do it. And then the banking system's crazy. I mean, they just really I just want to see this. Let me see. There's anyone here? See, Jews Jews don't really play too much in England. Yeah, they don't really play too. I don't see the incumbents here. Yeah. Yeah. England they don't play, but US for sure. That's why US has its solidarity, right? They got almost, you know, there's a lot of positions in there. You know? There's a lot of positions in there. Now let me show you something. Jews before I let y'all go, Jews and bank Jewish leaders in banking. This this is where it really gets down. This is where they really took over. And they're in a battle with, no offense, this is the other battle. So many battles going on underneath. Um, Saudis and all that, right? They're trying to get into the finance world. These are big dogs, man. Mike Bloomberg, Lloyd C. Blankfein, big, big, these are big, big dogs. Edelman, Fink. Fool, if you if you look up these names, these are the big dogs, guys. These are the big dogs. Simmons, Soros. Alright. Big dogs. They can they wheel a lot of power, a lot of lobbying power, a lot of money. Mark Cuban, yes, Jewish. The list is look how long this list is. You gotta respect game. If you wanna be the if you wanna have some type of voice in this world. The Jews are the perfect blueprint. Look at this. Look at this. Respect. That small country produced this many people in those positions. I understand it's a legacy thing. I understand it's passed down. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Somebody started and was smart enough to continue it. I mean, it is what it is. Look at this. I can't even stop the goddamn list. I can't even stop the list of finance, guys. I cannot stop the list. Lord have mercy on me. Jesus Christ. Sheesh. So as we go into the talking points of the Israel and Iran ordeal, and you know that the banking sector is backed by the U.S. dollar, and that, that is the power of the, you know, no offense, of the Jews. The U.S., the banking side, the dollar. We know UK needs the dollar. The NATO needs the dollar, right? And then a little tidbit war between two countries that have religious, religious ideologies that are conflicted. You never let any battle or bad circumstance go to pass. Bad moments are times to take advantage of. And the Jews, yes, the Americas, the NATOs, they're going to take advantage of it and say, well, this will allow us to Maybe inflict some pain for those wanting to get away from the dollar. That's my thesis at a high level. The lower level stuff, yes, there's there's internal beefs between Iran. It's the Middle East and it, Jews have a lot of beef. What's happening in Palestine, right? Feels like they're bulldozing over Palestine, saying this is ours and you ain't going to do nothing about it. Yes, you killed 600. We took out 34,000. That's the number now. 34,000 Palestinians dead. For a lot of us, we would say, man, you, you made your point. Let them come back in. But for the Jews, the thinking is kill or be killed. There, I said it. The, world, the word of life is kill or be killed. I said it. So if you have that mind state, you want to eliminate anything in your way to the point of no return for that alternate, that alternate faction. And I believe that is why we're going to see continued conflict here. And if it raises up and U.S. and NATO renege on there, we will support the Jews. We will not support the Jews in any retaliation. I think the word is that dollar. And that's the word. That's the war that they've been wanting to start to try to calm down Russia and China from bringing the rest of the world into their power circle with the BRICS movement. And I believe Africa is with China and Russia. 
You got some of South America that's with China and Russia. A lot of countries. India is playing both sides of the feet. They always do. But you got some big countries, big nations with large populations, with military forces in the excess of 5, 10 million that can come into play. And when, when world powers battle like that, there's nothing good that can come of it. And that will include the U.S. Your buddy Mikey signing off here. Israel continues. They said we will not stop. Can't stop, won't stop. They want to retaliate.